Hello, on behalf of the Hamburg Chamber of Commerce, welcome to Viewpoints. Join us as we find out about some of Western New York's summer attractions. To occupy the restless, no matter what their ages, we have information about ongoing recreational activities in Hamburg. Learn the details on some old and new events and celebrations that will take place. And discover an ancient attraction in the heart of Western New York that most people don't even know exists. Stay tuned, I'll be right back with my first guest. Hi, I'm Seth Debuy, and welcome to Viewpoints. Today I'm sitting with Sally Kaczynski and Dorothy Markert. Uh, Dorothy Markert is a local silkscreen artist from Hamburg, and Sally's working with Premier Promotions. And uh, luckily we're coming up to the summertime here in Hamburg because I've had enough of the winter and the cold weather, but we got enough hot. What do we have coming up now in the summer? We have a wonderful early American festival happening July 16th and 17th at the Erie County Fairgrounds. It's called Apple Pie Americana and it's each day from 10 to 5. It does run simultaneously with, with the Burger Fest, which is on the 16th, and also with, with the um, art show that's on the 17th. To correlate the two of them, we have hired a trolley that will be going back and forth between the fairgrounds and downtown and the art show to bring people to and from both events. So we're really excited about all the happenings that are, are going to be going on. Has this been a yearly thing, or is this the this first? This is the first annual. First year. First annual, right? We're going to have, be having sheep shearing and Civil War reenactment and covered wagons and the Simon Gertie long rifles and um, sheep to shawl which we're actually having somebody shear the sheep mm -hmm. spin the wool and make the shawl it's 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 something that's it's kind of like a mini Williamsburg that people just don't have the time but we're going to have it right here in our own town oh that's gonna be fantastic mm -hmm. sounds like it's gonna be actually pretty exciting because everybody that's doing it is doing it for the first time right and not only is it is it um, an early American festival where you see all kinds of demonstrations, but there's also all kinds of entertainment going on. We're going to have the country cloggers there, the Niagara Frontier fiddlers, um, the back porch pickers. So there'll be continual entertainment throughout the two, the two days. And um, besides that, we have over 100 craftsmen that will be not only selling, but demonstrating their, their craft. So we're really looking forward to a great weekend and a family fun-filled weekend. Mother Goose is going to be there. Santa Claus is going to be there so the children can see what Santa does in the summertime. <laughs> is he going to be wearing the big suit? Oh, no, no, no. He wears shorts in the summer I, just I like the rest so. of us. Maybe he'll even shave and take off that, that <laughs> no, beard. No, he doesn't take off oh, his beard. Dear. Oh, it's permanent. I was able to catch the uh, back porch pickers, Right. I believe, at the Expo 94. Oh, they're excellent. They yes, were actually yes, pretty good. Right. And uh, if we can fly on over to Dorothy. You've uh, brought some things yes. that, that will be on exhibit during the show? Yeah, or uh, the Centennial Arts Center of Hamburg is sponsoring an outdoor art show on Sunday, mm -hmm. July 17th, in conjunction with Hamburger Days. And uh, it's been a tradition in Hamburg to have an outdoor show every summer, and it's been moved to July with Hamburger Days to make the whole weekend a big celebration. I've been doing screen prints for many years, and this is a print that I did of um, a map of Hamburg with sketches superimposed on top of it, taken from yeah, just antique a little bit, little bit down like postcards that. depicting things that happened in Hamburg around the turn of the century. And uh, I also brought a little screen print that was done by one of our members of the Little Red Schoolhouse in Hamburg, which is the Centennial Arts Center. It's at the corner of Lake of uh, Pleasant and Amsdale Road. The uh, art show itself is at the corner of Lake and Union Street, which is a wonderful shady park, and the artists will be hanging their paintings, watercolors, oil paintings, acrylics on the snow fence, and some will bring their own display setups, and it's a wonderful time for people just to walk around and see what 
people in the area have accomplished, and it's a nice time to buy an original piece of artwork, too, if anybody's interested. How many artists will be featured? Usually we have up to 100, so 100 it'll be artists. pretty this gonna, full. This is big. Yes, not too many craftspeople. We try to keep it more fine art, paintings and drawings, mm -hmm. and photography, and all rather than uh, we have the crafts crafts. people, you yes. have the fine arts. Right. It's a nice so mix. a nice balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why we have you together. That's right. <laughs> Works out beautifully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this I, actually your wares will be for sale. Yes, I'll right? be there. How much would something like oh, the map go for? This one I sell for forty five dollars and that's an okay. original hand printed screen print. Oh fantastic. That's number two I noticed. How Numbered. many how They're many all, uh, I think it's probably twenty. I usually That's do. Real limited, yes, limited I edition. do very small editions. Okay, and it will probably be destroyed then after this. Well, it is for already. Investment. Well, there you, you know, go. Uh, yeah. For those of you looking for <laughs> investment quality, this yeah, is a good deal. They're definitely limited. <laughs> I clean my screens off and start uh, a new you, project. Yes. Uh -huh. What kind of what kind of food are we going to have? I, I can just imagine from all the different ethnic backgrounds that surround this area that. Right. Besides yeah. hamburgers, I'm sure there'll be other. An apple pie, sure, have an apple pie America. That's all you need. <laughs> that's, that, that's right. The fair is, it, this is co-sponsored by the Erie County Fair, so they're taking care of all the food. Um, we didn't want to concentrate a lot on the food other than a, a few little nibblies because, mm -hmm. you know, that's at the weekend of the Burger Fest, they also have the taste of Hamburg. Yeah. And I think it's important for, you know, people to, to get to downtown Hamburg and participate in those events. and sit down and have some good food over there from all the great restaurants we have right along Main Street and Buffalo Street. So There's a bunch. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we discussed it or not, but what times during the days? Ten morning? to five. It is ten to five. Right. Both, yeah. both days for both the events. And just in case it rains? Well, we have a Not few that we little... want that to happen at all, but... <laughs> No, I mean, actually, it's not going to rain. No, no, no. <laughs> actually, you can actually buy insurance to make sure if it does sure. rain, you can <laughs> still get everything out of it. That's right. Is it, oh, go ahead. We're also having an early, um, an all-American baby contest, and uh, there's about oh, okay. nine participating at VEC people from downtown Hamburg. Oh, I can think of Expressions and Kids in Caboodle, mm -hmm. and a few of the restaurants at uh, Coyote. Coyote Cafe. Coyote Cafe. They all have the information there, so people can just stop in or call 6480185 and we can send out the information. We're going to have a $100 gift certificate for the cutest all-American baby and then two gift baskets for the second and oh, third runner-up. That should mm -hmm. be fantastic. Yeah. Is there an entry fee? $3 and it's going $3. to That's benefit it. VAC. Right. Absolutely. Right. Is there anything else that, that you could think of? There will be refreshments at the art festival. There will be hamburgers mm -hmm. and hot dogs on Sunday. So if anybody wants to come and nibble while they're wandering around. I don't want to get I don't want to get too much involved with the, the whole hamburger story. I mean, we were talking about this before and exactly. I realize it's a, there's a there's a huge gray area where the facts actually come from. But we do we do know it was not Hamburg, Germany. That's right. Correct. That's it's Hamburg, New York. But there's a place in Wisconsin that I think is also claiming Seymour, yeah. Seymour, Wisconsin. It doesn't matter. Oh, really? Well, this is television. We have to. Oh, we it does do matter. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, what I have here, I'll just read just for those interested because I was kind of interested. Um, Supposedly, uh, back in uh, 1885 at the Erie County Fair, where this will be taking place, correct? Um, this is where it all began. That's in fact, we're just going to make that true. It is true. It is law. Right now, <laughs> Burger came from Hamburg. We're just going to keep it like that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you very, very much, both of you, for coming. Actually, is well, when, when you say the cart, the trolley, I just want to talk about it real right. quick. Where's that going to run? The Where's trolley's going to run between the fairgrounds to downtown Hamburg, mm -hmm. and then on Sunday it'll run from the fairgrounds over to the art festival. And we're working, we're trying to work with the Historical Society. They may, may be open that weekend, too, mm -hmm. so that it, the trolley can make all kinds of stops. So it's kind of an all-around village, fun town event. And that'll be running from 10 to 5? 10 to 5, right. And taking you to and from and the park. And it's free. It's free. It's co-sponsored by the Erie County Fairgrounds. Okay. Well, thank you well, both thanks. very, very much for coming. Thank, thank you for you having so. us. Okay. When we come back, uh, we'll have uh, Tammy Franz from the town of Hamburg Youth Bureau, and we're also going to have Marty Denneke, which is the uh, Senior Recreation Supervisor of the town of Hamburg. And we'll be right back.
Welcome back. Uh, I have Tammy Franz from the Town of Hamburg Youth Bureau, and I also have Marty Denneke, who is the Senior Recreational Supervisor for the Town of Hamburg. I'll start with you, Marty. We're in summertime. Yes. Summer seems to be the theme today. Mm -hmm. What do we have new coming in the, in the town for recreation? Well, um, our new offices mm -hmm. um, located on Lakeview Road. We've moved from Town Hall, and uh, we have um, a new location, and uh, people can register for our programs right out there on, at 2982 Lakeview Road. Um, we also are running a program, uh, much of our program, out at the... Uh, the area it's called the Nike base or the Lakeview Road recreation area mm -hmm. our summer uh, day camp program is run out there um, for boys and girls age 7 to 13 for a base cost of $45 per week we also have a summer top program that we're running right out of our administration building uh, for boys and girls ages um, 3 to 6 and um, we have uh, uh, qualified staff who are uh, uh, ensuring that the uh, kids who, who go out for those programs are, are going to have a great time and, uh, and, and and engage in many, many activities. We also, I mean, that's the tip of the iceberg as far as activity oh. go. We have uh, uh, 32 supervised playgrounds, which are free neighborhood playgrounds where, where people can go. Uh, we have swimming uh, and tennis lessons. Um, we have a cheerleading clinic. Um, we, we oversee a number of facilities like Hamburg Beach, um, uh, our town of Hamburg Golf of Course, which is also slated for some new construction uh, from 9 to 18 halls that, in which we'll break ground uh, this year. Um, uh, we also uh, have a fitness center at our beach that has um, some added construction so that now we have a private uh, aerobic studio and, and uh, many of uh, the college students um, who are back home for the summer. Did I hear you correctly? A private aerobics studio? Me meaning uh, it's closed in so anybody who's self-conscious about being in an oh, aerobics oh, oh. class okay. uh, uh, there's not people peeking at them or, or just it's just the people in, in, I in think the class a itself. lot of people are going to be interested in knowing that because yeah. I think that holds back a lot of people from going to the other mm -hmm. clubs yeah Thanks. And, and it is a beautiful facility and it's located at at Hamburg Town Park there's a lot to do here I mean this is a big town I never realized how how vast you cover in terms of actually well now we're talking about recreation Right, but there's a lot of things out there. Yeah, programming and facilities. I think we're we're very blessed in the town of Hamburg, and in addition to the town of Hamburg Recreation Department, uh, the village of Hamburg Recreation uh, has a village of Hamburg has a recreation department, as does the village of Blazel, which is part of the town. So between the three departments, uh, there's there's many many programs uh, for youth and adults uh, okay. throughout the town. So. Okay, thank you, okay. Tammy Franz. Uh, we're going to have a tape in a, in a few seconds uh, showing the 24-hour relay that took place a couple Saturdays ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what's your department doing? Um, I think, as Marty was saying, the town is very blessed to have so many facilities. The Youth Bureau and Recreation Department work hand-in-hand -hand on a lot of programs, one being the relay, which you will see in a couple moments. Uh, we also have a program called Town Youth Engaged in Service. Mm -hmm. Anyone 14 to 18 years of age can come down to Town Hall to the Youth Bureau and apply for some summer jobs. Uh, lawn mowing, house cleaning, that kind of thing. We also have youth engaged in service volunteer program and they're involved in a lot of activities throughout the community. Okay. Uh, the Youth Bureau was um, very privileged to be involved in spearheading the relay that you're going to be seeing. It was Actually, very... Actually, we're going to take a look at that right, right now, now, in fact. Okay. Let's break away to the clip. I'm standing here with Congressman Jack Quinn. How do you see this affecting Hamburg and the surrounding areas in the future? Well, you know, I've been talking with the, with the planners off and on for the last couple of months. It's uh, first, uh, first in the area, not only for this area of the state, but maybe in, in a large area. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's infectious. Uh, it's, it's, a great, it's a great benefit, first of all. But the camaraderie I think they're going to have over 24 hours, if you ever got caught in a snowstorm, you end up being friends with everybody. They got great weather and a great charity, and I think it's going to be a great day and probably the first annual of many, many more to come. I, and what's your name? Chris Warren. And you're the captain of this team? Yeah. From Frontier Middle School, we're the Roadrunners. I understand you're one of the only teams that are made up solely of middle school students, is that correct? Yeah, it is. We're all from the student council at Frontier Middle School. Sabretooth, pretty excited about today's events? 
<laughs> the, the name of your team, please, Bev. The Chamber Chuggers. We are ready. We are psyched. We we think we are going to do awesome with this event. Do you think you're going to be able to stay awake for the 24 hours? Months. Awake? There is no doubt in my mind. This alertness. We even have our county legislator here pumping us up. So we are ready. So I'm standing here with county legislator Bert Villarini. Uh, Bert, what's this all about today? Well, it's a great charity event that uh, we've put together. We've, a lot of volunteers and a lot of people have given their time. We're going to be here all day and all night. And it's a really a terrific event. Uh, this is, I think this is the first time in this area that the 24-hour relay has been run. And uh, it's gonna, the money's going to go to good services and good programs. Make and some we're real happy about it. We're getting... And what's your team's name? Coach and the gang. I'm Coach. <laughs> and this is the gang? This is the gang. <laughs> okay, what theme song did you choose? We will rock you because we're going to win it. Well, can I have your name, please? Uh, Sally Ann Franz. And you're the team captain of what? I'm a co-captain of the Dudley do -Rights. My grandson, Andrew, is my co-captain. Are you guys going to be able to win or stay awake for the 24 hours? We're, that's our challenge. If we can, our goal is to make it through the whole thing. And what's the name of your team? The Runaways. Okay. And we're going to run away with this race. We're going to beat all these people. Everybody feels pretty confident. What makes you think you're going to be able to pull it off? Take a look. Take a look at these bodies. They're all in shape. You guys gonna be, you guys gonna be go, 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 go to the left, go right, go left, go right. <laughs> there is no lack of energy here at Hamburg High School today. No, no, My name is Colleen Gorko. I understand this is one of the other few all-adult teams. Um, yes, it is. We, you, go ahead. Oh, you go ahead. <laughs> well, we work for the My town guess. of Hamburg, and um, we run drug awareness program. So our team name is called the Town Drug Ladies and Friends because we also have been joined by Dr. Michael Anzalone, who's a chiropractor. And we're going to use his services later on in the day. <laughs> Standing here with Town Supervisor Pat Hoke and Town of Hamburg Councilwoman Kathy Hochul. And uh, I guess I'll start with you, Kathy. Uh, how do you think this is going to affect Hamburg in the future in terms of uh, business and other opportunities? I think this is a tremendous opportunity for the whole community, the businesses, the parents, the students, the schools, everyone to come together for a very worthwhile cause. And I think this is going to set the precedent. This is the very first year that I can see this going on for many years to come. And Mr. Hoke, how, how do you perceive everything that's going on? Well, I think the, the cause for this, we have 290 participants raising, ranging from high school age to senior citizens. Here are these next 24 hours, there's going to be meaning and purpose for these youths. It's a worthwhile cause. They're all winners out there. In this competition, there isn't a loser. Don't start this race without a baton. Does every team have a baton? And welcome back. I'm sitting here with Jerry Pestido. Now, Jerry's from the Hamburg National Historical Society, is that correct? Natural History Society, right. History Society. Right. Tell me a little bit about the history of the History Society. Okay, the organization is really uh, relatively young. Uh, in 1990, uh, a group of 
um, concerned citizens, amateur and professional geologists, and some local town officials uh, from the town of Hamburg, spearheaded by Mark Cavicoli and Jack Quinn and Ron Hayes, began work on trying to preserve a quarry in Hamburg, uh, primarily for the purpose of preserving the quarry to collect fossils. Uh, mm -hmm ancient remains of uh, animals that lived 375 million years ago. Um, a study was done by the town of Hamburg in uh, 1991, an environmental impact study to see what effects the um, Ravenwood North industrial unit would have on the quarry and uh, after that study was completed it was decided that a nonprofit organization had to be formed to go ahead and work on the quarry to go ahead and supervise it, operate it, develop it and mm -hmm. actually purchase the property. So in uh, 1993 uh, the organization, the Hamburg Natural History Society was formed uh, in April of 93. In August of 93 we were incorporated under the state of New York and in February of 1994, we received a nonprofit uh, status from the IRS, which allowed everyone that makes donations to the society to claim on their income tax. So that's about where we're at right now. We are now in the stages of going ahead and trying to raise funds to purchase the quarry. It's an ambitious project. We're looking to raise something like $337,000 to go ahead and buy the property. We intend to go ahead and make it a multidiscipline facility from the standpoint that there are two ponds on the property which we'd like to develop. We want to put in a nature trail that will go around the entire property. Mm -hmm. The property is about 56 acres in size. Uh, we have interest from the astronomy group at Buffalo State to come in and put a pad out there so they can do things in the evening. So we're, we're trying to make it sort of a multi-discipline okay. thing. Let me just backtrack for a second for those, those viewers who do not know exactly what we're talking about. Right. This plot of land is very unique to actually the country and the world. Right. From the way the, the fossils are laid down and from the time period that they're coming from, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, Oh, good. No. It's, a, it's a, an area which uh, allows people to come in and collect without having to worry about cliffs or anything else. And the mm -hmm. animals that are preserved here are 375 million years old. It's almost an inexhaustible supply of fossils, and the diversity and abundance of them is, is very large. So this too. is quite unique. Yes. Quite unique. Yes. Okay, you brought some of the fundraising gadgets here. Right. Well, one of the things we're trying to do is to go ahead and um, republish the geology and paleontology of 18 Mile Creek, uh, hopefully to raise some funds for the society to help purchase the property, then develop it and put a building on the site and everything else. Um, so right now, this will become available in September of 94. Um, looking to raise money there. And we also have uh, some boats, 15-foot boats, that are be cre being created by a group at Buffalo State this summer, Upward Bound Project. Mm. And uh, there's students from New York, New Jersey, Puerto Rico, and Virgin Islands that are coming in. They're going to make 25 of these boats. And the boats are being donated to the society in hopes of raising money to okay. help with our project. We have about 15 seconds before we go into the, the videotape and I'll show everybody what we're talking about. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say real quick? Well, right now we're looking to go ahead and look for sources of fund raising that we can get into, looking for memberships, and of course we're looking for people to, to help buy the book and everything else. But right now we're also in the process of looking to hire a fundraiser to help okay. us with these goals. All right, let's go take a look at the, uh, the videotape. Standing here with Tom Kinsey from the Buffalo State College. Uh, basically, what your interests are are the, uh, the way the children look at, at digging up the fossils. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I've been bringing uh, students out here for many years. In fact, that's how I got interested in this site. Uh, I brought first my son's first grade class, and it's turned into a traditional first grade field trip for the students at uh, Union Pleasant Elementary School. And it's always exciting for me to see the kids, how interested they get in, in finding the fossils and how easy it is to find fossils here. And once we clean it up, what a nice, safe spot this will be for kids to come. So I'd like to show you some of the things that the kids have found uh, today. Okay, great. You want to show, show what you have? Yeah. And what's this? This, this is, this is preoccupied. And this is um, a horn that, it, that used to have uh, some bigger ones, but it got stuck onto a rock. So what do you call that now? Just for your, what, what have you named that? Um, I named it the Y-Stone. Okay, you can see why he calls it the Y-Stone, which is a good name for this, based on his, what he found. It looks like, uh, shaped like a Y. We once again have the brachiopods here. See if we can get in the sun. There and we go. have the horn coral. And we have a different kind of coral that she found, found here. And all these were just found by finding what's on the ground here. Nothing. Most of the kids didn't do any digging. They just looked on the ground, and these washed out by uh, natural uh, resources. How long were you digging for this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time. Okay, hold this. You want to get yours back? Here we have another. Well, you tell them what it is. Do you remember? 
I think so. What is it? A brachiopod, I think. Okay, so he found a brachiopod at a different site here, and it's a, another good sample. Okay, do we have anybody else? Oh, I found I found that one way on that mountain, way over there. Really? Yeah, way over there. Okay, so you can go all over. Over yonder. Yeah. Now here's a bigger, bigger brachiopod that was found. Put okay, put it on his hand out in the sun so they can see it. Okay, you want to explain a little bit about it? Well, I found it in the um, little stream near the bed over there. And um, this is part of the shell that broke off from the other part. Do you know how old it is? Mm, no. Probably pretty old, huh? About 350, 370 million years. I'd guess with that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Take this back. Now, here we have... Sometimes you find the fossils embedded in larger rocks, and this is the face or head portion of a trilobite. And as you'll see later, as you look around in other sites, there are some people who have gone into the trilobite bed and actually pull out whole trilobites. But this is uh, the face portion that, that you can sometimes find. So you find fragments and, and sometimes whole uh, fossils. That's a very interesting piece. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Yep. So if you look back here, you can see that these things, you just, they're everywhere. Um, in some places, you can just literally put your hand down and you'll find a horned coral. You'll find a crinoid, a little crinoid disc, another horned coral, another horned coral. So there are some that are very prevalent here and you just simply reach out and pick them up. They're just here for the, the grabbing. Uh, when I bring my first grade classes down, I always take them to a place over here that I call crinoid heaven. And I have the kids get down on their knees, close their eyes, and put their hand down, open their eyes, and open their hand, and there's always a fossil under there. Never fails. Uh, I'm Rick Bad. I'm a paleontologist at Buffalo State College. OK, what do you have going here? I'm digging a trench to get down to the trilobite bed. Uh, in order to get some good fossil trilobites out of this quarry now, you have to dig quite a ways down. It's uh, one layer that was deposited by a series of hurricanes, uh, and you can find complete trilobites in it. The rock above doesn't have as much, so you have to dig right now to get to it. What age period are we talking about? Where again? We're talking about Devonian about 387 million years ago. Uh, back then, this area was covered by a shallow sea. We were about, oh, 15 degrees south of the equator. No kidding. Yeah, pretty, pretty shallow, about 40, 50 meters deep. Now, now you do this, of course, professionally. Are you collecting samples for the college? Uh, right now, I'm going to start a research project on the uh, lower Wyndham Shale. I've been looking at a rock unit called the Wanaka Shale below uh, this, quite a ways below, and studying the changes in the fauna, the fossil, uh, through time, looking at how they reflect the environmental changes, the sea level changes, oxygen levels, and other characteristics like that. So how much further, you're actually down about, what well, it looks like about a foot and a half. How much further do you have to go? Well, the trilobite bed's uh, just below water level there, probably. And I've got some seepage here. Probably later in August, it'll be a little bit drier. We'll do some work. What have you found so far? Do you have it on you? Well, I haven't found anything so far because the rock above the trilobite beds doesn't have much of anything in it. Okay. The uh, trilobite beds itself was deposited during a couple of hurricanes where everything got buried quickly. And then the rock above represents uh, deepening of the water. There wasn't too much living in the sea at the time. It got too deep. We tried covering a lot of topics today. If you need more information, please contact the Hamburg Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to say thank you to all my guests, and thank you at home for watching. We'll see you next.